Hi guys, um, welcome to this um, lecture um, looking at um, how to write a good 30 mark essay, um, focusing very much on the, the topics uh, of the differential achievement topics, so looking at the gaps in achievement by class, gender and ethnicity. And um, I want to talk about developing your points on interrelationships. Um, so you are, and you know, AQAD exam board really does like it uh, when students can um, explain how um, the different factors they're talking about, uh, well, particularly in reference to differential in achievement, are connected. Uh, so they don't really like seeing like an isolated series of points. They like you to recognise that quite often processes outside of school, in school, and even several processes within school um, are very much connected to one another. And this will allow you to be credited for evaluation and analysis. Um, most 30 mark essays on this topic um, will ask you to evaluate explanations of the differences in achievement between social groups or between ethnic minority groups or between social classes or between the genders. Okay, uh, or you might get a general social groups. This is a really easy essay to create a debate between the different explanations. So it's an easy one to create evaluation in. Uh, but so it's really, I'm just saying, don't just list the explanations, okay? You want to sort of start out each point by saying this is a stronger or weaker point connect, uh, connected to ones you perhaps you've made previously or try and create a debate as you move through. Um, so this is the essay we're gonna be working on today. It is one on ethnicity. Um, Applying material from item B and your knowledge evaluates sociological explanations of the differences in educational achievement between ethnic groups. Um, the item is really short and succinct. It, it kind of is directing you towards the debate you need to make. It says all levels of the education system show differences in achievement between ethnic groups. When explaining these patterns, some sociologists focus on the role of the home and family life in promoting educational achievement for some ethnic groups. Um, so the item there is definitely directing you to talk about the role of home and promoting educational achievement that's talking about values and they've also said some ethnic groups and that's definitely something that I want you to make really clear in your essay. Um, all ethnic groups do not all fail. It's really important that you recognise some ethnic groups are successful, some ethnic groups are less successful and within the different ethnic groups there's a diversity of outcomes based on gender for example. However, other sociologists suggest that factors within schools are more important in explaining the differences in achievement between ethnic groups. So again, the item is directing you to talk about what's happening inside schools as well. Um, so this is effectively an easy one to create an evaluative debate. You could do one side of the argument is saying it's all about home, home factors, and then the other side of the argument saying, no, no, it's all about school factors. However, like I mentioned earlier on, the focus of this particular lecture is, is how you develop your interrelationships. Um, so rather than doing what I've just described there, which is almost like juxtaposition evaluation, when you might say, no, no, it's definitely because of a lack of cultural capital in the home, that's why they fail. Um, however, others would argue it's because of teacher labelling in school. That's just juxtapositioning. What you need to do is develop your analysis of the interrelationships between what happens at home and school and how they're all connected. Um, so here's the level descriptors for the top two bands for a 30 marker. Um, so if you just look at the top section, that's all about your knowledge, your AO1. So you need to have sound, conceptually detailed knowledge uh, and a range of relevant materials. You need a wide range of points on the differences in educational achievement between ethnic groups. A sophisticated understanding of the question material will be shown. Uh, the next point is always about your application. Uh, material will be applied accurately and with sensitivity to the issues raised uh, by the question. So everything you write will be relevant to the question. And uh, this last uh, section is your AO3 skills. Okay, Your analysis and evaluation will be explicit and relevant. Evaluation may be developed, for an example, through a discussion of the relative importance of home background, e.g. cultural and material, versus school factors. So the ethnocentric curriculum linguistic factors and labelling, or the interrelationships between them, okay, so there we are, I've circled it, between them and wider social factors such as racism in society, analysis will show clear explanation and appropriate conclusions will be drawn. Uh, so what we're aiming for today is all of you to end this lecture with um, a band, a top band essay. 
Um, I've given you the next band, 19 to 24. Um, the, they don't mention the phrase interrelationships explicitly in the, the next band. However, from my experience of marking the paper, it is very hard to get into the 19 to 24 band unless you have identified the connections between what happens outside of school and in school. Okay, um, so if you want to pause the lecture to read through that in more depth, you're welcome to, or we'll just move on. Right. Um, I have produced a Word document with um, my elements of this essay written on it. Um, I will have shared this with you. Um, if for whatever reason you're not able to print off that document, um, it'll take you a little bit longer, but I'm sure you'll still find it useful. Um, just write out the sec sections that I've written, and then I'm going to ask you to add your own points to it. So this lecture is slightly different to my last one on 30 mark essays because you, you are going to have to write aspects of this essay yourself rather than just listen to me talk about what makes a good or bad essay. Um, so really, really uh, quick plan here. You want to chunk your question. Um, so um, I would have definitely chunked, um, you know, uh, explanations of differences, okay? Um, educational achievement as a second one and between ethnic groups. Um, now with that differences linked to the ethnic groups, you must discuss why some do well and some fail. It's very important you don't lump all ethnic groups together. It's not, not right and it's certainly not fair. Um, so in terms of differences, um, I just thought quickly of a few different groups we could talk about. I said about talk about maybe why Chinese and maybe Japanese students succeed. Uh, black girls can do well uh, due to strong female role models in lone parent families. And I've got Mary Fuller's study that I want to talk about as well. Um, black boys are more likely to fail. Um, we, we know that, um, that the black community is unfortunately more likely to fail, particularly from, from boys. And also, I want to talk about white working class failure as well, because it does say between ethnic groups. It doesn't just talk about ethnic minority groups, okay? Um, so then I sort of thought, okay, let's just think of uh, two or three home factors, two or three school factors. So home factors, um, I'm going to talk about cultural deprivation. Um, a sort of cultural deprivation theory, I thought, um, particularly speech uh, codes and family life. Um, and I'm going to try and uh, evaluate that, AO3 that, by um, perhaps using black girls' success, um, particularly because of the strong female role models in lone parent families and black communities. Um, I want to do a point on material deprivation, explaining a failure. Uh, I, want, I also want to make that connection to racism in the workplace, which you know was, was mentioned in the mark scheme there in the top band being able to make that connection beyond what's going on in schools and home. There's also other factors going on that can explain failure, perhaps between some communities. Um, but again, I want to AO3 evaluate that with the fact that um, Chinese students do particularly well, even though they do become from, come from materially poorer backgrounds, working class backgrounds. Um, and you should know that that's generally because of the really strong education values within that community. Um, so school factors, just for your reference for the rest of this lecture and, and the essay, I've done in red, so you can see the difference between home and school. Uh, so school, uh, I'm going to talk about teacher racism leading to labelling, uh, which can also uh, trigger uh, the self-fulfilling prophecy, uh, generally because lots of um, uh, minority students, particularly the black community, end up in low sets, uh, where, for example, um, anti-school subcultures are more likely to, to be formed, which value, you know, um, the inversion of school values, anti-school behaviour, and uh, they do not value educational success. Um, I'm going to hopefully have time to write about the ethnocentric curriculum, um, make some sort of reference to the institutional racism of education, and the fact that, you know, black and minority ethnic students don't generally feel that they belong, perhaps because of the nature of um, the British education system, which can, of course, lead to a lack of motivation, along with other complex issues. Um, so, like I said, if you're going to do a juxtaposition evaluation essay, you could just write about all the home factors in your first half of your essay and then do all of your school factors in your second half of your essay. You wouldn't get above 19, okay? Um, you, you have to have some level of developed evaluation to get into that second band, which is 19 to 24. Um, so I'll give you 19 out of 30 if you did an essay like that. So let's try and move beyond that. Um, so, I, you know, I can recognise just by looking at this plan that the home factors on the left are connected to most of the school factors on the right. Um, and I've just drawn a load of arrows, which obviously looks a bit complex when you see them all at once. But I know, for example, that the way students learn to speak at home 
links to labelling in schools and teachers' perceptions of language can be quite racist. Um, you know, they might hear um, a strong Afro-Caribbean accent and um, see that as a behaviour issue or, or an indication of them not being clever enough, for example. So I know I can connect those two processes. Um, we're talking about um, black girls' success, um, I know Mary Fuller's study sort of talked about the rejection of teacher labelling, so I can connect those two. Um, material deprivation and lack of resources, I know that can lead to students being put into low sets, so I can connect what's going on at home with what's happening in school. Um, and again, I've got a point there about Chinese students doing well, even though they're from working class background. Uh, that's yes, of course, but because of values at home, but also because they really do benefit from a positive label in school and as a result, a positive self fulfilling prophecy as well. Um, oh, and sorry, cultural deprivation I've also connected to the ethnocentric curriculum, which is obviously biased in favour of a white middle class um, upbringing. So, this is a really quick plan that I've drawn up. Um, so let's have a look at getting started. Um, of course, in 30 mark essays, you have the time to write an introduction. I cannot stress enough that they must be really brief, maximum two sentences. Do not just regurgitate everything you're about to write in detail. Do it really, really quickly because you're just wasting time. So here's my really brief one. Um, there are clear differences in the achievement of stu students when divided by ethnic background. Black boys, for example, are more likely to fail while Chinese students succeed. But it's not as simple as saying that this is because of a poor home life or due to racism in schools. The reasons are complex and often interlinked. Um, so I've made a real nod there to the, towards the fact that I'm going to discuss home and school. Um, but that final point is, you know, I'm going to talk a lot about interlinking or how different processes are linked together. OK, because I want to get into that top bound with this essay. So our first point, I have written the first section, if you like, and you guys are going to write the second section. So um, I've talked about cultural deprivation, sorry, cultural deprivation theory, and uh, I've actually used this to develop my debate throughout the entire essay. I've effectively, I'm going to start off talking about their approach, um, but I am going to then criticise it using several other um, uh, factors as I go through the essay. So cultural deprivation theorists agree with the item that the failure of black students is down to their home life. Basil Bernstein, Bernstein pointed out that how children learn to speak has a huge impact on how they do in school. If they grow up speaking slang or Creole, which is, is common in black Caribbean households, they may struggle to understand lessons or textbooks, leading to lower educational achievement. Um, so I've mentioned lower educational achievement at the end of that section of the point because that's clear ap application back to the question. You must remember to keep talking about lower educational achievement of the ethnic group that you're talking about. However, the way black students speak affects in-school processes as well, dot, dot, dot. Um, so this is where I'd like you to write the rest of this paragraph, okay? I'd like you to make the connection between how young people, black students particularly, learn to speak at home and what happens in school as a result of the way they speak. Okay, um, and that, I want that to be relatively developed. I have given you the final sentence though. Um, Therefore, the way students learn to speak might be less important than the teacher racism in schools that leads to black students achieving less well. Okay, so I've given you your final sentence. So I'd like you to pause the lecture at this point and I'd like you to write the rest of that point about what happens to black students in schools perhaps because of how they might speak. Probably give yourself maybe five to ten minutes to finish that point. Um, I'm going to move on. So this is more for my reference because I'm doing it on PowerPoint. You hopefully have uh, the Word document in front of you so you can see the previous point. So just to summarise, that first point was on cultural deprivation and speech codes at home and it was linked with teacher racism in schools. Um, hopefully, in the point you wrote, you talked about labelling. Hopefully, you wrote about self fulfilling prophecy and maybe, maybe some connection between being put in low sets and the formation of subcultures. So hopefully, those things have been referred to. Don't panic if you haven't mentioned them just yet, those things in brackets. Um, we will be looking at them in other points. So the second point then, um, cultural deprivation theorists argue. So again, I've opened with cultural deprivation theory, which is exactly how I opened up my first point. So I have created, if you like, a chain of reasoning, reasoning here. 
cultural deprivation theorists argue that family life has a huge effect on achievement. New right thinkers point out that black families are more likely to be LPFs, lone parent families, and as a result, children from these families are less likely to be socialised to value education and respect the rules of school. At Sewell, that's Tony Sewell, argue that the lack of male role model in black households was especially harmful for black boys. In school, because of their lack of value for education, dot, dot, dot. So uh, I would like you to finish this point for me. I would like you to make the connection between what happens, um, you know, for black students and particularly maybe black boys, because we've talked about school there, because of their lack of value for education, how does that affect the processes that in school? Okay, because perhaps they don't value education. What are they more likely to form in school? Why are they less likely to do so well in school? Because of that lack of value in the home. And as I've done before, I've given you um, the final uh, link, perhaps. You, you don't have to use it exactly my one, but you can if you want. Therefore, the lack of value for education learnt from home has a direct effect on school processes, such as the formation of anti-school subcultures leading to low achievement. So hopefully, in that point, I'd like you to write about anti-school subcultures, and I'd like you to do that in quite a bit of detail, please. So again, give yourselves five to ten minutes to write, finish off that point. If you can pause the lecture now. Okay, fantastic. I'm going to move on to point three now. So I'm kind of hoping in that point two, um, you know, we talked about, I talked about culture deprivation, lone parent families, lack of value of education interlinked with anti-school subcultures. And I'm hoping some of you perhaps used uh, the use of Tony Sewell's Rebels, perhaps, um, when he talked about how black boys respond to racism in schools. Um, he talked about the rebel response, which is very much linked, perhaps, to the, their, their value set. Um, and you could have also, have clearly, you could have actually evaluated that whole point, really, saying it's not because they don't value education at home. It's more because of the teacher racism that they face in schools that they lead to forming those anti-school subcultures. That is an absolutely valid point to make and would be a good point of evaluation. It's just not one that I've done in my version of this essay at this point. <clears throat> However, what cultural deprivation theorists ignore, so again, I said I was going to use cultural deprivation theory throughout this. I'm clearly uh, evaluating cultural deprivation theory now, and that is chain of reasoning because it flows through all the points. However, what cultural deprivation theorists ignore is the success of black girls from lone parent families who are inspired by strong female role models, often their mothers, and have the cultural capital to value education. Um, so there's another bit of chain of reasoning there because I'm talking about LPFs, which I talked about in the previous point. Mary Fuller's study found. So I want you to finish off this point. I don't want you just to describe Mary Fuller's study in depth. That's, that's going to be descriptive. That's not going to be very useful. I want you to talk about Mary Fuller's study. Um, and I want you to make the connection between the, the girls that she studied and how they valued education. OK, so they had that value of education um, despite the teacher racism that they faced in school and the teacher labelling and, and how they managed to do well because of that. OK. And I want you to keep on making that link back to the fact is that those girls, yeah, they, 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 they had the cultural capital to value their education. OK, um, and I've given you the link again. So once you finished your point, you're more than welcome to use my link. Therefore, it's clear that these black girls were not culturally deprived and did well despite teacher racism. OK, so again, it's a, an application to achievement because it says did well. OK. Um, so get, give yourselves five to ten minutes to finish that point using Mary Fuller's study. And then we'll move on to point four. If you just pause. Okay, point four. So, uh, point three was talking about the success of black girls, lone parent families, role models, sort of culture capital and the value of education and uh, the rejection, rejection of labelling, which is an in-school process. Um, so hopefully you're starting to identify in this essay, I really have integrated the arguments for home and school. I've gone through it almost as a debate as I've gone through, rather than just sticking school at the end and doing home at the beginning. So point four, <clears throat> cultural deprivation theorists, again, that chain of reasoning, 
also ignore the role of material deprivation. A number of minority ethnic groups occupy low paid jobs. This may be because they are first genera generation migrants and have only just entered the job market, but also may be because of racism in the workplace that prevents them getting higher paid work. The reason I've highlighted that in yellow is that it can be really frustrating and a bit annoying uh, when I read an essay that says ethnic minority groups are working class or ethnic minority groups suffer material deprivation. You need to explain why that is. Okay, and also make it clear that not all ethnic minority groups are working class. That is not true. Okay, um, so it's also a very good opportunity for you in an essay to show off that you know a little bit about what's going on outside of schools. Okay, so racism in the workplace is the main explanation, perhaps, for why particularly the black community are very much more likely to be in the working class. Okay, um, you could also talk about you know, issues in a, the education system, meaning that, you know, the, you know, black students are less likely to graduate with high qualifications because of racism in them and the education system as well. That's also absolutely fine. Anyway, um, research shows that <clears throat> the black and Asian community are more likely to be working class. As such, they may not be able to afford the material resources to help with education, such as iPads, Wi-Fi and good housing. This can lead to poor quality schoolwork being done at home. This clearly then links uh, to the in-school process of labelling as teachers will see the poor work as evidence of them not being clever or not caring about their work, so label them negatively. Uh, quick apology, um, that whole sentence from this clearly um, should all be in red because this is talking about a school process. Apologies, I've not done that. Um, and also, just to point out, what I've done here is made it clear. I haven't just gone, oh, um, they haven't got the material resources to help with education. I've then explained why that can lead to failure, okay, which is application um, to them um, not doing so well in school. So I've pretty much written that whole point for you. So what can you guys do with this one? You guys can evaluate it for me. However, Chinese students from working class backgrounds break this pattern. Why? Okay, and I appreciate I've got a bit mixed up now with my red, my, my plan for red. Um, I would like you to write a relatively detailed and analytical point now about why Chinese students, despite being materially deprived, how come they still do well in schools? Okay, what are the different processes, both at home and in school, that goes on to help them succeed? And again, I've given you the link, which seems to suggest that material deprivation can be overcome as working class Chinese students, Chinese students tend to do well while other working class communities fail. They're not a whole lot given away in that link. So give yourself five to ten minutes to finish that off. Please pause here and then we'll have a look at our final point and then our conclusion. Okay, point five then. Uh, so point four, um, I, hope we talk, I talked about material deprivation, racism in the workplace, lack of material resources, linked teacher labelling, so I've done that in red, um, and then hopefully you've evaluated that using Chinese students and discussing the high cultural capital they have because um, they value education so much within the Chinese community for various reasons that hopefully you've mentioned. Um, and then I've linked this to in-school processes. Um, they also benefit from the positive halo effect in schools. Chinese students are often seen as high achievers to an extent they're pathologised in that way. Um, because they're, they're seen as like really hard sloggers, if you like. Um, and you might have, and it'd be completely fine and great if you did do this, you might even refer to the harm of those high expectations might do to those students um, uh, as, a, as a way of sort of evaluating the effect of high expectations on students. Um, and you would then need to connect that back to achievement though. So perhaps the really high expectations might lead to the students um, having mental health issues and not being able to succeed in school, for example. That's how you'd apply it to, to achievement. Anyway, wonderful. Um, so point five then is on um, the white community. So one of the most materially deprived groups in the country is the white working class community. As a result, of under, as a result they underperform when compared to most other ethnic groups. The reasons for this are, so I've left this one quite open, for what you guys can write about for this. And I'm really, I want to see, this is a, the paragraph I'm gonna to wanna to see off you. Um, 
The reason you can, of course, write, write about white working class community is because the essay question just talks about expl explanations of differences in educational achievement between ethnic groups. The white um, community is an ethnic group and the white working class, if you like, is a, is a minority group, the white working class. So the reasons for this are um, it's only you've only got one paragraph to write, so you need to be selective about the issues that you do talk about. I've given you a range here. You could talk about their home life, work, uh, white working class street culture, speech codes again, labelling, set, subcultures, Nike identities, um, parental choice and sort of policies around league tables, for example, as well. Um, but in this point, as we've already done in our other points, I want you to talk about at least two, three, maybe even four processes, okay? And I'd like you to make the connections between them. So, for example, if you if you write about, you know, home life for the white working class, um, whether it's about values, for example, you certainly should be connected that to perhaps the labelling that happens in schools because of the values they end up with or why they end up in bottom sets because of home life and values. Likewise, if you write about the street culture, you know, of their neighbourhoods, um, that would be very strongly connected to perhaps the in-school formation of subcultures and, and Nike identities if you want to use some Louise Archer stuff as well. So I really want you to kind of make lots of connections between the processes. Talk about two, three, maybe even four. And try uh, to create at least one chain of reasoning link back to something we've already talked about in this essay. Okay. Um, so it could be one of the points that we've made previously. Okay. Anything that you've got there. And try and make the link perhaps between something we've talked about before for an ethnic minority group, so the black or Asian communities, you might say that process is clearly just as harmful um, or as beneficial to the white working class group as well. So again, if you can pause, um, give yourself a good 10 minutes for this one because I'm asking you to do this one almost from scratch. And I haven't given you the link either. You have to do your own link for this one. So that's why I'm really interested to see this final paragraph. So if you pause and finish that, and then we'll look at the conclusion. So um, with your conclusions, you need a, a, a judgment ideally and a smart Alec comment, okay? Um, and I always try and say, you know, try and stick something new in. Uh, so I've written, to conclude, despite several policy attempts to close the gaps between ethnic groups, they still exist. No point I've ever referred to policy yet, so that's something new. Largely because most schools are seen as white middle class institutions where anything different doesn't quite fit. The symbolic violence ethnic minority students are subject to means they don't feel that they belong in many schools, leading to a lack of motivation, making a low achievement more likely. So symbolic violence is something new. And I've clearly made a judgment that it's to do with problems with schools that lead to lack of motivation um, rather than blaming it on home life. That's the judgment that I've chosen for this particular conclusion. Now, you're not allowed to use my conclusion or any of the points that I've made in my conclusion. I've given you some suggestions here. These are things that we've not talked about yet. Uh, you could talk about uh, Tony Saul's badge of victimhood, um, particularly for how black Black boys view blackness as something they're, they're victim of, which can be very harmful in terms of how they sort of see themselves and their abilities in school and their identity generally. Um, something that would be really interesting might be the influence of Black Lives Matter. You might do a relatively hopeful conclusion uh, because of the influence of Black Lives Matter. Will we see changes in education? Are we seeing changes in education that might narrow the gap because of it? Uh, wider changes in the economy. Um, We've got a global economy, um, are jobs changing, are, are there more jobs, are there more, more options for promotion for minority groups, or is it getting worse, you know, are we seeing more minority groups occupying the lower uh, jobs, uh, particularly when we've had such a huge amount of migration perhaps around the world, you know, our lowest paid jobs, are they occupied by white British or are they occupied by minority communities because of discrimination? Um, even though I had it in the um, uh, plan, I never actually mentioned the ethnocentric curriculum. And finally, you could make a point maybe just on the role of class, like your conclusion could be around about how important class is, um, perhaps over and above issues of race and ethnicity, for example. Um, so, I'd be, yeah, very interested to see the conclusions that you write as well. Um, thanks very much for listening to this. Um, I am going to ask you guys to share with me your um, your version of this essay. Um, good luck with it. Um, and any problems or anything you're not sure about, please do get in touch. Thanks. Bye.